What's up, guys? It's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. It's been a while since we've done a transfer video. You know, we've been having games coming in every, like, every other day. So now we have a little bit of a break, and we're going to look at some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. A lot of news to cover, so before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button. Let's try to get to 150 likes on this video. It'd be very much appreciated. And of course, hit that subscribe button, and let's get into it. The first story we're going to talk about is the one about Jean Claire Todibo. As you all know, we have a kind of a center back crisis in a way because we you know our defense has been crap. There are rumors of Tadibo coming back to Barcelona from Benfica. We heard those rumors about a week ago. Now we have something concrete coming in from Ken Desair saying Justin Benfica has already decided to return Tadibo back to Barcelona in the winter transfer market. But as things stand, Barcelona hasn't received any message from Benfica yet. Nobody has approached them to communicate this decision yet. So what I'm worried about is if Tadibo comes back, are we gonna try and get rid of him again or are we gonna implement him in the team? As we all know, we have a full first team, so if Toribo has to come in, someone's going to have to leave. Right now, we have Amtiti Langlet, PK, and Araujo as our four center backs. One's going to have to leave in order for Toribo to get any sort of minutes, and we all know that PK is going to be out for a while, so it could be him and Araujo on the right, along with Linguesa as backup, and on the left should be Omtiti and Langlet. But the weird thing is that once this story came out, Candacera came back and said, update on the Toribo situation, Benfica cannot return John claire Toribo in January. The loan agreement is for a full season and the contract cannot be broken according to Barcelona sources. So it looks like Tadibo is stuck in uh, Benfica for a year. According to the Barcelona sources, they cannot break that. He can come back because the loan was for two years. He can come back after the first year and if they want him after the second year, they have to pay 20 million. It looks like the only way for him to come back is in the summer. And I feel like if he comes back in the summer, Barcelona is going to try and get rid of him again. Or maybe the new president fancy him, we'll never know. But I think the rumors of Tadibo coming back to Barcelona are 100% over in terms of the January transfer market. Maybe in the summer he can come back. 100% confirmed now that Tadibo will not be returning in the January transfer window. One defender to another we're going to talk about now. One of our current defenders is Junior Firpo. Now, Mundo Portivo came out after the Juventus game saying that Junior Firpo knows that he has no future at Barcelona. Barcelona all have offers from England and Italy for the left back. Now, we've been hearing rumors since the summer about Firpo leaving, how he's you know not trusted by the coach and how he you know he's not going to get any chances. And I just find it absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand why he's not getting more chances over Alba. Alba's playing crap and we keep consisting with this uh, Jordi Alba at left back. I don't understand why Firpo's not giving a little bit, even a little bit of a run out. But it is what it is. Sport came out after that. That, this is sports so make take it with a pinch of salt saying that Inter Milan wants to sign Junior Firpo on loan in January Barcelona expect to receive more offers for the left back don't want to rush into reaching an agreement with any club so Barcelona are looking at you know offers for Firpo because they know that he can attract a lot of money he has a lot of value because he has a long-term contract and they know they can at least get what they paid for it. I believe we played 18 million plus like 5 million or 6 million variables for Junior Firpo so Barcelona can easily sell him for at least 20 to 25 so we can recuperate everything that we've you know got off him I think they're going to use that money elsewhere. The question is, will we let him go? And if we do, will we bring in the replacement? I don't think so. I think that replacement will come in the summer if Firpo leaves. And then for now, it would probably be Alejandro Baldi who steps in, as we heard numerous amount of rumors about. But it looks like Firpo is going to be leaving Barcelona. feel bad for the guy. He never got an opportunity, just like Luca Dina, just like every other left back we had. Uh, Adriano, I did have got some time to look in, but never really, you know, came into it. We've had so many left backs for backup for Jordi Alba since he's been here since 2012. None of them could compete with him, and this is just another one that honestly failed. I feel sorry for him. He did a great role, but this but looks like he will be moving on. The question is, will it be in January or the summer? There were reports a few weeks ago about Antonio Rüdiger coming in for a loan or maybe for a little bit of a small fee. I think ESPN and Sport talking about it. Mundo people came out saying that Barcelona have ruled out the signing of Chelsea centre-back Antonio Rüdiger. So Rüdiger would not be coming to Barcelona. He'll be staying at Chelsea. Would I have taken out Barcelona? Probably not. I think there's better options out there. He can't even get into the Chelsea team. Why should he be coming into the Barcelona team? Maybe he would have been a decent option for a low move, but we said that about Jason Murillo and he didn't really work out. We've had other center backs that are the same quality as Antonio Rüdiger. I don't think it would have worked out. And just shows again how unreliable sport is because they were the one who broke the story and when he was saying there's nothing in it, he's not going to come. So no Rüdiger to Barcelona. No more on journalists in the world. We all know who that is. It is Fabrizio Romano. He has a podcast called the Here We Go Podcast. What a name that is. He talked about our center back issues and he brought up two center backs. Those were Oscar Mingueta and Eric Garcia. Let's start with Austin Mangueta. He says that Austin Mangueta has one year left on his contract with Barcelona, but the club is working to extend it. Barcelona have an option to extend it for two more years. So Mangueta has only one year left, but Barcelona have an option to trigger for an extra two years. So we have Mangueta for three years, but Barcelona are looking for him to get a new contract. That that looks like that's in the works. Will it be a first team contract or not? We don't know yet, but it looks like he will be getting a new contract from SC Barcelona. And of course, the other center back we talked about was Eric Garcia. He said the feeling at the club is that Eric Garcia will 100% play for Barcelona, 
whether it be in January or next summer. The club has an agreement on everything with the player. The contract is for five years. So I said that during the summer transfer window that Eric Garcia will 100% be joining the Barcelona. The big question is, is it in January for a small fee or will it be in the summer for free? Everyone already knew this. Fabrizio are now confirming that. So we are 100% going to excited Eric Garcia. He will be a Barcelona player. The just question is, is when? Will it be in January for a small fee? Will it be in the summer? I think we should just, if we're 100% going to get him, let's pay a small fee in January, start recuperating him, you know, integrate him into the squad, let him start living in Spain again, but all that sort of stuff. Paying a small fee will be, you know, come come good in the end. I think Eric Garcia is going to be a quality center back for the future. Reminds me a lot of Gerard Piquet. Will he live up to that expectation? We don't know. I was disappointed when we sold him to Manchester. I believe it was, what, 2017 or 18? And now he's going to be returning to the club. So we could expect 100% Eric Garcia to be FC Barcelona player. So I guess we can say now, welcome Eric Garcia. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about Mr. Inconsistent Frankie de Jong. So you can tell I'm still a little bit salty from the event this match. So Munda Batiba have come out saying that Bayern Munich have already loved Frankie de Jong back in 2019 are once again interested in signing the Dutch midfielder. First of all, with that Elliot Dersen, de Jong's agent, is in contact with the German side. So there is contact between uh, de Jong's agent and Bayern Munich. Goal have also come out saying that Barcelona are worried they may need to sell Frankie de Jong next summer due to the financial problems at the club. De Jong has a contract until 2026, but Bayern could renew their interest in the Dutch player if he is put on the market. I'm going to tell you guys this straight up. De Jong ain't leaving Barcelona. He is the future of Armin Field. Him and Ricky Poch, to be honest. So, De Jong will not be sold. These are just rumors to, you know, tell him to basically step the hell up because you're so inconsistent. These rumors do not, don't even look into it. De Jong is the quality that Barcelona need. He will be the future of Armin Field. I can tell you right now the club's financial status is not that bad for us to sell De Jong. And if we need to sell players, we have to sell all of the dead food first. Omtiti, Firpo, Coutinho, you can even argue that. Reason you could argue that. There are a lot of players that should be ahead in the pecking order, ahead of Frank De Jong. De Jong is not leaving Barcelona. I think hopefully these are rumors just for him to tell him to let him know to step up. That's the way that I interpret it. I hope that's the way you guys interpret it. But don't see anything in these type of rumors. Like, yeah, again, Frank De Jong is one of the top players at Barcelona. Don't see him leaving whatsoever. A player that could be coming to Barcelona in the future is, of course, Erling Haaland. I know a lot of Barcelona fans want Erling Haaland at the club. So do I. I think he'd be a quality number nine. TV3 came out saying Mino Riola introduced a clause when Erling Haaland signed for Bruce Dortmund, which states that after the end of his second season, he could leave for $75 million. Now, we all know that Erling Haaland joined Dortmund last January. We're approaching January, so this January will be his one year. So at the end of this summer... He will be available for $75 million. They also came out saying Michael Zorg, the sporting director who signed Erling Haaland for Dortmund, will be a key part in the Barca election campaign. More than one presidential pre-candidate has already contacted the sporting director. Now, it's not clear what candidate contacted Zorg, but there are contacts between more than one candidate. There's a lot of presidential candidates that want Erling Haaland. I think this would be a fantastic signing for Barcelona. Do I think we're going to pull it off? I think it's between us and Real Madrid. And that all depends on, you know, who gets Mbappe at the end of the day. There are rumors that the PSG sporting director are now in talks with Mbappe and Neymar to renew their contracts. But I think they're only going to renew one. The question is which one. Looking more likely Neymar because I feel like Mbappe has more ambition to leave. And Neymar's just like, you know what, I'm stuck in PSG. Might as well stay here. And of course, Messi can play a whole influence on this on his decision. So we'll see. I think Barcelona do prefer Holland over Mbappe. And Real Madrid prefer Mbappe over Holland. But we'll see what happens. And I'm hopeful that we can get him. I think 75 million is a very, very cheap price for a player of his talent. And of course, Mino Aurelio is agent. You're going to have to give him at least 50 million in the agent fee for that. It costs near around 100 million if you consider, you know, his uh, release clause, his contract itself, and agent fees. He'll come maybe just under 100 million, which I think would be brilliant. If you think about it, you can literally just swap Coutinho for him. You sell Coutinho for maybe 60, 70 million. And there's your money for early Holland. It is that simple. We have, I do think we have the money once the president comes in. He will have, you know, a proper plan on how to get that money. Maybe from loans, some player sales, uh, commercial fees, uh, church sales. He can easily get this money. And hopefully he spends it on Erling Holland because I think he would be a brilliant signing from Barcelona. Now we're going to get into some of the news regarding the current Barcelona team. There are a lot of reports about Coleman. First of all, coming in from Ken Deceres and they say that the Barca dressing room is beginning to question Ronald Coleman's tactic approach of the 4 2 3 1. They assume it is their responsibility but believe that another formation could benefit them. Or have came out back in that saying there are aspects of Ronald Coleman's philosophy that are being disputed by the dressing room and the internal criticism of his tactics have increased recently. These are coming from two. Sources close to the club. I think Candice are very reliable and of course I said many times the sport aren't really that reliable But these are both reports coming from you know top Catalan media sources This is a question that we have to this has this is a report that we have to consider that's true So a lot of the players are not really fine of that 4 2 3 one The rumors are that their main the team's main problem with that formation is the double pivot area They feel like this should be three in midfield that begs the question How do you fit Coutinho in the team? How do you fit Griezmann in the team? How do you fit Pedri in the team? Well, I feel like Pedro, you can play him in center mid, but can you play Coutinho in there? Maybe. Can you play Griezmann there? Probably not. It begs the question. So the dressing room now is 
kind of turning on Coleman a little bit. We saw this under Kiki Setien. Never saw this. We never saw this under Real Garden. But Kiki Setien, people were saying that like, the way he plays in the dressing room was saying that look, the four four two kind of thing or the four three one two wasn't really working for them. So we'll see what happens with that. So Javier Miguel came out after these reports saying that Coleman's exit is not a question since his quest does not have the authority to do so. On the next president will have the power to make this decision. In addition, many pre candidates want Coleman to be in charge for at least till the end of the season. So basically, everything I said in my match review for the Benzis match and my match analysis video yesterday is correct. Tusquets is not going to sack Coleman. Coleman is probably guaranteed to stay until the end of the season unless something catastrophic happens and all the candidates would agree that too. So we are pretty much stuck with Coleman until the end of the season because we know he's not going to do something crazy that's going to get him sacked. He won't lose like six games in a row. He'll be like lose one, win four, lose one, win four, which is going to be so inconsistent throughout the whole season. Two squads is not going to sack him. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, once the new president comes in, like I said before, and I'll say it again, as soon as the new president comes in, he's going to have an immense amount of pressure on him. Teams already started to doubt his formation. A lot of pressure on Coleman right now, and hopefully he comes out of it strong, because at the end of the day, I just want what's best for Barcelona. So the last thing I want to discuss in this video is, of course, the Champions League. Yesterday, the Champions League group stages were completed, and now Barcelona have a definitive answer of who their round of 16 opponents can be. There are six possibilities, either either Manchester City, Borussia Dortmund, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, Chelsea, or PSG. So either way, we are going to be out. You know why? Because our second game will be away from home. Since we finished second in the group, the first game will be at the Camp Nou, and the second game will be away. And that's why it's very important for Barcelona to finish first, because A, you get easier teams, and B, the second game is at home when you finish top of the group. But since Barcelona finished second, our second game will be away from home. And I tell you what, if we face Liverpool or Chelsea, we are done because they have fans in their stadium and they're just absolutely going to destroy us. Now, I want to show you on the screen right now is the probability chart of which team Barcelona can get. And the most likely team that Barcelona will draw in this group stage is Bayern Munich. First is Bayern Munich. Second is Dortmund. Third is PSG. Fourth is Chelsea. Fifth is Liverpool. And sixth is Manchester City. Basically, we have a 43% chance of getting a German team and uh, the rest is other. And I'll tell you what, if we get Bayern Munich, it is going to be a banter game. We are going to get slapped around. And the funny thing is, it's not even one game. It's two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, like, I tell you what. We could have been, you know what we could have had? If we came first in the group, you know, we, we could look. If you look at the top of the chart, these are the teams that finished second, right? So these are the old teams that we would face if we came in first. Atletico, Sevilla, Porto, Leipzig, or Lazio. And if Barcelona finished first, they couldn't draw Atletico or Sevilla because they're from the same country. So we either would have gotten Porto, Leipzig, or Lazio. Still would have been difficult, but would have been definitely doable. Now we're stuck with either Bayern Munich, Chelsea, Dortmund, Liverpool City, or PSG. Whatever team we get, we are going to be out. We are going to lose second games away from home. We are going to get slapped up no matter who we place. I just want to see us get Bayern or Liverpool just to end our misery, just to kill these last three years of being the worst years in Barcelona history. It's terrible. It's terrible. The only way I can see Barcelona winning or moving on in the next round is that Coleman fixes up, switches to the 4-3-3, and all the players turn up. Otherwise... We have no chance, especially if it's Bayern. I think if I were to pick one team that I wouldn't want to face is PSG. The simple reason of just Neymar, because I know Neymar's going to come in, put some masterclass performance, shush us and all that crap, and it's just going to be annoying. The one team I don't want is PSG. I'll take anyone else. Probably PSG is City, because, you know, Pep. But other than that, I'll take I'll take Chelsea, Dortmund, Liverpool, or Bayern Munich, to be honest, because at the end of the day, we're out. I've already accepted the fact that we're out, so... It's basically La Liga this season, or we're going trophyless because we are not winning this UCL. I want to say thanks to the team because, you know, they came second and they bottled it against Juventus. We could have been with Porto, Leipzig, or Lazio, but now we're stuck with the big team. So shout out the first team for choking against Juventus. So that's my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know in the comments down below. We talked about the defense. We talked about the young to Bayern Munich. Erling Haaland to Barcelona. Talked about Coleman, how there's doubts about his system and how there's no way he's getting sacked until the person comes in. Talked about our Champions League probability, who we could face. Let me know who we should face down in the comments below. And of course, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. No!